Hello folks, lots of clear weather these days. So what I do when the weather is clear, I leave my rigs out and just cover them with a tarp all day. That way I don't have to go through polar alignment again. So here's what my setup looks like um, with the tarp. These tarps, they work great. The only problem is a couple days ago, I took off the tarp and I didn't even know it loosened my camera, so my rotation was off. I had to come out about uh, midnight before I even realized I was capturing images with the, the wrong rotation. So I gotta be careful. These tarps are heavy and I gotta be careful when I take them off not to loosen anything. So, and uh, there's my surveillance that I keep on each one. And I do turn the power off, of course. So you don't wanna be generating heat under these things. So, clear skies amazing we've had a run of clear weather it's like i can't believe there's clouds right now but it's supposed to clear up later okay so i am on the last legs of capturing a close-up view of i think it's the eastern bale nebula i can never remember between east and west but i think it's i think it's the east and um it's a bright nebula when you capture it in narrow band it's strong in both ha and oxygen which is what i'm going to capture it in and even though it's bright um i'm going a lot of hours i already have nine hours of it in ha and six hours of it in oxygen so uh, i'm hoping to, to pull off just that little extra bit of detail if i go extra hours we'll see if anything happens if i find anything new and uh i should finish with at least nine hours of oxygen after tonight and uh uh, go from there and one more thing is if you remember that uh, live stream we did of that that big um, solar prominence it's on the Facebook sky page which is run by one of the NASA APOD guys so that if you see a picture there that usually means you may be in the running for a NASA APOD I'm keeping my fingers crossed but I think that would be awesome that to have held a, a live stream on something that might actually become um, a NASA APOD. So uh, we'll see if that ever, if that happens. I'll be watching it over the next few weeks. So, okay, I'm going inside. Okay, so here are both of my setups on surveillance, the RASA on the left and the Explorer Scientific on the right. And this is the one I'm making the video for, the Explorer Scientific scope. But I wanted to show you something here. Okay, so what I was going to show you were all of the problems I was having with my other rig, but I actually detailed all that in my previous video. And so what happened is talking about all that stuff, my Veil Nebula imaging session kind of got lost in the shuffle, so I don't have that anymore. So I was just going to show you some stuff out of Pixinsight really quick here. And uh this won't take long but i wanted to show you this is what a single sub looks like for ha and this is what a single exposure looks like for oxygen and you can see um, these are four minute exposures each with gain 139 for ha and gain 75 over on the right for oxygen and, and they're both pretty strong as i expected for the veil nebula and let me show you what the, the stack data looks like. I actually went big on this project. I went 10 hours for each filter. And this is a DBE on HA and a DBE on um, oxygen on the right here. So you can see uh, 10 hours each of data. And uh, uh, what surprised me though is, um, is oxygen let me put more light here, but oxygen actually had um, it actually had a lot more nebulosity, very faint nebulosity going around all around the East Veil vale Nebula, very faint stuff going on there. And while I like picking up extra nebulosity, it seemed to make my the background a little uneven in my final picture. So I'm not sure how I feel about that. I didn't know how to really handle it. <laughs> But I'm not sure if it looks right or not. But eh, if it doesn't look right, it's just because of um, inability with my, my processing. And let me show you uh, what the combined data looks like. And this is, this is how it looks like when I first combine the data 
And um, what I'm trying to come up with now is how to get the correct star color even if you don't collect um, red, green, blue data. And you can see from this combine, look at all of the stars. The, all of the stars sort of have that same sort of color that the, the nebulosity has. Um, and they kind of adopted that color, even the ones that are far away. So, um, and I see this in a lot of other people's pictures and they just let it go. But it's for me, it's, it's starting to bug me and I'm trying to invent a new way of getting accurate star color, the correct color on stars, even without the RGB data. But I just haven't come up with a way that works the same way for everything. It's tough. Here's a, I got a little closer with this one, with this combine, but um, the stars turned out a little too yellow. Uh, and they kind of look like a banana color, but you want more of a gold orange on certain stars and blue on other stars and So I didn't really like that, but as I I just kept trying and finally I got to a color that I liked and uh, I got pretty far in this process um, Almost to the end and here's <laughs> Here's the this is this is my first final edition, and you can see the the, the that nebu extra nebulosity was really uh, <laughs> it really made an uneven background, and I'm not sure what to think about that. I'm not. I, I, it's just what happened. I didn't know how to deal with it. I just left it. And but the problem with this picture is while it I think it looked pretty good from afar. Um, when I zoom in on it. Um, it, it doesn't really pass, the, I call it the smell test. Um, you can see these areas, um, the, the, this is a, at, at 100%, but you can see it sort of starts to look scratchy and with artifacts um, over the, can you see that? It doesn't look good at all. And while a lot of pictures in astrophotography look good if you just resample down and you can't really see, it still bugs me when I go in at 100% and I see that, um, and denoise wasn't really helping either. You could just see it looks scratchy or grainy with little artifacts and probably as a result of the way I sharpened it. But like I said, you can hide it by just not letting people see the full resolution. <laughs> but it was still bugging me and I, I wanted to go back and um, here is what I came up with. It's not quite as sharp, but um, it I can zoom in on it as far as I want. And the nebulosity looks a little thicker because I didn't sharpen it. So it's a, uh, what, what, what do you think of the one on the left? So the what I like about the one on the left, this one, is uh watch this now this is 100 percent i like the star color too this is 100 percent and look at that there's no it's not scratchy there's no artifacts and i can go in literally at 200 percent 300 percent for <laughs> I can go in as deep as I want, and I wouldn't be afraid to let people inspect this as close as they want. So, you see that? It doesn't even matter. Go in as deep as you want. I don't even care. So, now, now how did I do that? I wish I had wrote, wrote it down. <laughs> so, I think I'm going to go with this one as my final picture. And, and, and that's the thing is, I'm kind of afraid to show all my processing because I still feel I'm a hack. You know, I don't have a standard process. I'm always going back and forth, and I probably don't do things the right way. But I really like um, how this one came out. And so, uh, maybe I'll get this on a metal print. Who knows? And the thing is, because um, I, I don't mind, I could blow this up as much as I want. I, I could probably get a really big metal print. It really, really doesn't matter. Um, it, it won't look grainy at all. So... Well, that's all I've got to share, folks. That's just a few insights. I don't know if you found that useful or not. <laughs> um, so, anyway, I'll see you guys later. <laughs>